Hello YouTube, I would like to show you my uh, Tamiya's Grasshopper modifications, especially the rear suspension, which I made uh, uh, a crawler-like suspension with a four-link system. So you can see in the rear that the suspension is not uh, similar to the stock, it's more like of a crawler. It has a, a sideways travel. And a full articulation. I will take uh, now the body off. So you can see it better. Uh, the suspension uh, co consists of uh, four links. Two lower links and uh, two upper links. The upper links are triangulated so the suspension does not have a uh, side movement. Um, first thing I did was to build the transmission and to flip it over. So now you see that the motor is on the back. <coughs> uh, then I used the uh, existing shock mounting points uh, for for attaching the links and the shocks. I used also the stock uh, suspension blocks. Uh, I only drilled the hole in the center of, of the pivot block to attach the suspension uh, links. The suspension links were made from uh, uh, aftermarket AliExpress um, uh, ball ends and simply M3 uh, threaded rod. I have not measured the uh, suspension link length. It was uh, eyeballed. I assembled the model a few times uh, just to make uh, the gearbox location right. I have increased the wheelbase with only about one centimeter, uh, which is uh, still okay for the grasshopper body, but the model is more stable and okay you can see that the the top links to the chassis they are attached using the uh, Tamiya's uh, I don't know U-joints like sh shock or spring mounts and on this side I also used this U uh, mount I have attached this U mount by drilling the gearbox case and attaching the nut and the bolt from the inside. You needed to shave a little plastic but it does not interfere with the gears. You can see that this uh, top is uh, triangulated. I used a few spacers because if you triangulate it too much it will bind. Here you can see the movement. This um, solution is not perfect because, uh, for example, if compared to uh, manufactured crawlers, you can see that uh, they have a very and accurate geometry. In my case, it works, but it's not very accurate because you can see the axle is uh, is pivoting around the some uh, imaginary point in the space. It's not right on the axle. I don't know. Why? My geometry is, you know, made from the head. It's not uh, any scientific calculation and um, it is not pivoting very perfectly, but it does the job. For the shocks, you need to use the softest possible shocks. Um, these are AliExpress internal spring shocks, but I didn't like uh, uh, the idea that the, the, the spring which is inside it binds and makes the shock not not very smooth so I just simply took them out and put them on the shock shaft here also I could uh, uh, lower the spring even more by uh, sliding it on the shock eyelet so it's like removing preload so now you can see that it's it's very soft and and it it's it it sags a little in the neutral position. So now 
about the gearbox itself I you see I am using an interesting uh, airplane motor it's in a Turnigy NTM prop drive uh, this motor is um, very lightweight it's a similar uh, weight to the 380 motor which is stock for the grasshopper but it has the power of 540 motor I used uh, this solution because I wanted to make the axle as light as possible to reduce the unsprung weight and to make more weight on the chassis itself this motor is you know exposed I won't be riding it in uh, very harsh conditions uh, I think it will be all right because these uh, small air airplane motors comes with um, a narrow hole spacing uh, for the attachment it comes with the 19 millimeter uh, spacing while the while the stock motor uses uh, 25 millimeters here so you can see this disc I have printed it it just converts the 19 millimeter to 25 millimeter so I can use this uh, small motor with a small mounting points and use the 18 tooth uh, pinion which is uh, stock for the not the grasshopper but for the hornet uh, without using the Tamiya's included adapter plate for the 380 and I can use uh, it's 2200 kV it's not very fast but with the 18 uh, pinion it's it's okay it's not high speed but uh, but it has uh, some nice uh, torque okay I will show you this suspension from all sides uh, slowly I will rotate the model so you can see all all the attachment points how it works uh, you can see that I put a lot of weight here because I use a lightweight lipo battery and um, I want to put more load on the shocks so it the suspension acts nicer here you can see yeah the movement to the side is, is, is not very good it shouldn't do that it's pivoting around not uh, not a geometrically correct uh, uh, point in the space it's not a very correct curve I'm using the brushless motor I use the brushless ESC for the front I wanted to use all shocks also but when you use uh, these U mounts on the stock grasshopper arms and on this uh, chassis point the shock becomes very very short so I simply bought the mm, grasshopper 2 this is grasshopper 2 suspension arms which uh, have this lowered position for the shock mounting so I can use 55 millimeter uh, touring car shocks uh, these shocks are not for touring cars they are for 118 scale uh, buggies from Aliexpress but they fit here perfectly uh, one more thing to note you can see that the shocks on here mount on the sides not inside the shock towers like on the stock grass water I had to make these holes with a Dremel so I can clear the shocks you can see how these holes uh, clear the shocks uh, now I will talk a little bit about the model itself because I'm going to run this model a lot I didn't paint the body I left it uh, bare plastic because uh, when you scratch it it doesn't look that ugly if it was painted it's not going to be a shelf queen um, also you can sand off the scratches um, yeah, the stickers are stock I used here the black paint with the paintbrush uh, I used um, a leftover vintage ACOMS servo the battery is a soft case uh, ZP2700 it's very lightweight so I had to add about 200 or 240 grams of weight in the chassis mostly located at the rear so I can preload the suspension more and to compensate for the LiPo battery because this uh, car originally used uh, 
a heavy nickel metal hydride. Uh, you can see I have uh, stock um, Hornet tires because I was running this in the forest and they work better than the paddle tires which are on the grasshopper. And I think talking about the suspension, that's, that's all. The length of the links, for your information, I can tell you that they are about five, 55 millimeters hole to hole and both of them are equal length. This is the attachment for the top links. And the here attachment for the top links. So I think that's all about this model and this upgrade. <clears throat> Later I will try to make some more upgrades uh, regarding the front suspension. I would like to change it to, uh, uh, to the double wishbone, but I don't really like the 3D printed uh, suspension because uh, when uh, I will be riding this and bashing, it will eventually break. I would like to use some um, injection molded plastic, maybe the uh, Futaba FX10 suspension from Team CRP, or I will make my own, well, 3D printed suspension, but it will be a trailing arm, like an uh, on wild one. I will be making a carbon rod here and making the two trailing arms. Okay, so I think that's all. Thank you for watching. Please uh, like my videos if you like them and uh, subscribe if you like my channel. I will be very grateful for, for your subscriptions and likes. Thank you very much and goodbye. See you on the next videos.